I may be cool today because it's so dreary, rainy. It's my worst kind of spring weather. Um, that's why spring has never been my favorite season. Although we do know, as my husband reminded me, April showers bring May flowers. Yes, I'm grateful for that. However, it doesn't make the day to day any easier for me. So thank you guys. Please subscribe, tap the bell if you would prefer to be in warm weather in the winter or spring. I'm just saying, are we the same? <laughs> I hope you are. Uh, or if you just love God, please subscribe and tap the bell if you haven't already. And make sure you are subscribed. I've had many reports of people saying, I'm not seeing your videos, what's going on? I said, check to make sure you're subscribed. And they're like, oh my gosh, I was unsubscribed. I didn't unsubscribe. So make sure if you are a subscriber of my channel, you double check that you still are because there's been some funny stuff going on. There's funny stuff everywhere. Have you noticed? It's getting a little, it's crazy, but guys, stay positive, right? I keep making videos, even though I was sick the last 10 days, um, I still push forward to bring you some good news because we got to focus on the good news. So the, look, the reason why I'm live right now, it's 4.30, so it's early for me, but I looked at Mr. Sandman's amazing links. The Iraqi prime minister views meeting with Biden as opportunity to reset bilateral partnerships. <laughs> so I wanted to read you this article because I figured you'd be interested. It just came out this afternoon today, right? Um, Prime Minister Mohammed Chial al-Sadani considered his upcoming meeting with President Joe Biden during his anticipated visit to the United States in mid-April as an opportunity to establish a new and more sustainable basis for American, for Iraqi-American partnership. In the article, he stated, our discussions will reaffirm the ongoing importance of our economic relations, cooperation in combating money laundering and terrorism financing, because guys, that's going to be fixed with the digital system. It will be, trust me, because God spoke to me, blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. And believe me, they've already sold it to you. So it, it's happening. It's a foregone conclusion. So it will combat, that will help them combat the money laundering and the terrorism finance and use of political and diplomatic tools to diffuse regional tensions. They'll still have to play politics to diffuse tensions. And he added, the fight against terrorism will remain central to our governments, further stating we recognize and appreciate the crucial role played by the United States and other members of the global coalition in defeating terrorism, particularly ISIS. Part of the global coalition is Sandman 1 and 2. So cheers to you. This is our applause to you and all your efforts that you've done over the years over there to make this possible. Um, he continued, this support has helped Iraq achieve stability and security. Those are always the things they talk about. Make significant strides towards democracy, rule of law, and ensure government monopoly on the use of force. He went on to say that the time is right for our relationship to broaden, acknowledging the growing capabilities of our forces to defend Iraq and ensure the safety of its citizens, contributing fundamentally to building of a prosperous and stable Iraq. Again, security and stability are the watchwords from all the global partners that are seeking to invest in this country. The Iraqi Prime Minister concluded his article by stating that the relationship in its new form can be a source of mutual benefit for both our countries and a driving force for achieving stability in the Middle East. The White House announced on March 22nd that the Iraqi Prime Minister will visit Washington to meet with President Joe Biden, stating that the visit will take place in mid-April and will discuss a range of issues, including the development of the U.S. military mission in Iraq. I brought to you two days ago that they made a bilateral agreement, Iraq and the United States, for security. So that's ongoing. The global coalition is out. The bilateral partnership is in, based on these articles that they have released. So you can pretty much take that to the bank. At least that's what Sandman had told me. Um, they will also discuss the ongoing Iraqi financial reforms to enhance economic development and progress towards Iraq's energy independence and modernization. Guys, it's always, <laughs> show me the money. <laughs> Follow the money. <laughs> I love following the money. <laughs> and that's why God called me into his kingdom to help you with the money so you can get yours. <laughs> Amen. Oh God, I just love this. So guys, it's a longer article because it's, you know, given the strategic importance of the U.S. as Iraq's primary ally, there is a national interest in consolidating ties. However, clear and defined terms are essential to prevent ambiguity and ensure alignment with stated positions. So guys, let's see what happens. Keep your fingers up there. Keep your fingers crossed too. That was the biggest news you needed. The cleric is on again talking. Now he's pointing a finger in the picture. I'm not going into that. That's religion versus politics. Um, it does say Iraq's imports reached 70 billion in 2023, which is huge. So Iraq is key to the other global partners. Um, and guys, it still is a holiday there. It started yesterday. It started on the 10th. 
This is the second day of a three-day holiday, so don't expect a lot out of there. But I thought it was it was worthy to bring that to you because the government always goes forward as we see this. Um, now, I'm going to go to the other summary, which I always bring, of which I hope you will subscribe and tap the bell because I'm the only one who does this. I'm the only one who summarizes everybody's intel content and don't take anything personally, <laughs> even though a lot of people want me to. <laughs> Um, this is Paulette. Again, I don't really know her. You might know her. If you do, comment down below. I'd love to know who she is. It says, in her opinion, UN Resolution 1483 will have to be lifted to allow Iraq to be totally sovereign as it established the U.S. and U.K. as occupying forces. This is, in essence, guardianship or receivership. Absent the lifting, the U.S. has to give Iraq permission to do most anything internationally, including currency reinstatement. She is hopeful that internal control of the money structure is exclusively in the hands of the Central Bank of Iraq so they can at least move to the RDRV stage of their monetary reform. If not, the upcoming U.S. visit of Sadani may very well be pivotal. Salih recently stated he was unsure of the status of 1483 according to news articles. So that's Paulette. Um... Let's see, Mountain Goat. We are just waiting for the giant leap when the CBI gives them the second rate change. This should bring in much, if not all, the remaining capital outside of the banking system back to the banks that need it desperately for the economy to grow. This second rate change would coincide with the project to delete the zeros. We do know that that's off the exchange rate, or at least my community is aware of it. If this is the first time you're hearing that, please subscribe, tap the bell, watch the other videos on my, go to my channel. And then watch all the videos under the videos. Most of them are associated with this. You can get caught up. I've discussed it many times. Militia man. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Remember, when you say Iraq was paying for all their major construction at 1310, you'll see payments were able to disperse out of the DFI fund. Food, currency, exchange programs, electricity, oil infrastructure programs, equipment for Iraqis, equipment for security forces, civil services, salaries, ministry of budget operation. That's a broad spectrum. They had a lot of things that they could tap into that oil money revenue dollars DFI. It wasn't in dinars. Things have changed now. They have a time crunch since the DFI has gone into the Iraqi 2 fund. You're going to see big changes that he's excited to see. Thank you, Militia Man, for bringing that. Now we got Frank26, who's still over there in Hawaii. As far as I know, if that has changed, please comment down below. Iraq Boots on the Ground report Firefly Television is talking about Sudani's trip to Washington. They're saying high security and military personnel will accompany him. It looks like we're going to go this time with a completely different exchange rate. Frank, my hope and prayer is... He will talk to you about your new exchange rate because it's time to do so. He has given you every hint, every scenario, over option, every option of why you're about to have a new value to your currency and why your currency would be more valuable than the U.S. dollar, within the American dollar. And Frank is right. He has done that. Um, and Frank says, I'm sitting in great hope. He will make an announcement that will add purchasing power to your currency, then go to Washington then with that power representing him as the leader of Iraq, a free sovereign nation and not the loser of a program rate in country with sanctions upon them. Now, El al Fadar ends on Friday evening, <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> Good timing for us, right? We've always heard it was going to go on a Friday night. I always told you they would want it to go on a Friday night because then the banks are closed for the weekend and that could funnel the more people to those centers, right, that are open just for this purpose right? And their procedures. So if you want to stay free, please look at the email down below. Use your discernment. Um, it, and Pimpy brought out the average dinar holder holds only 250,000 dinars. What do you think? Are you more or less? You could just say more or less down below. That would be fun. Um, so guys, you've all heard about it. We, I've talked about it ad nauseum. I'm a different, I'm of the same opinion as John Dowling. So watch some of his content. He says, don't leave it out of your hands. Don't leave the Iraqi dinar out of your hands and make sure you always have control over it. And my strategies do just that. So guys, that's the end of my summary. That's the latest. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, I'm in many layers just to stay warm today, but it is iconic times. If you agree we're living in iconic times, comment down below. Guys, there's all sorts of theories about what's really going on behind the scenes. There was some new information brought up last night. It was revealed last night through a huge um, person uh, who's got a huge following, and I declined comment on that. I just declined comment on it. You tell me what you believe. I'm here to serve the community of Denarians. The people that hold Iraqi dinar, what do you think is going on? Comment down below.
right? So I love you all. Make sure you want to keep my channel safe <laughs> in your responses. Use code language, please. Uh, because those people that are running those theories are usually not on this platform. I have maintained this platform because God has called me to this and I've set his angels to guard my channel. But please be circumspect when you comment down below. I love you all with the love of Jesus Christ. May we all move forward and exchange this so we can move on to investing it in assets that I would like to talk about what we do next. Amen. <laughs> God bless. Bye. <laughs>